hip hop, or at least now, in hip hop, you know, you're only good for two or three years, then you get thrown away, you know, you throw out the baby and the bath water, and you just get a whole new tub, whole new artist, and you bring it in. You know, whereas you see other forms of music actually continue to maintain legacy. It's important for us to do the adults only concept to really connect with me if I wasn't, well, me, period, but definitely me if I wasn't a rapper. And what I mean by that is that the, the, the adults and the people who grew up on hip hop are actually lacking music that relates to their experience. Like they just out there dead. One of the very interesting things about hip hop that I find when it comes down to censorship is that you, for instance, this year you have a few people that say to you about hip hop, oh, I liked hip hop when it was positive. But I remember a hip hop before record, a busy B on stage, disco fever, where the cocaine crew at, everybody say blow. So, and that's 78, 79. What I'm saying by that, I'm not trying to advocate the use of cocaine or anything. What I'm saying is that the freedom was there. The freedom was always there to say whatever somebody wanted to say before we started making records. Cats was saying, I, my, one of my favorite rhymes that I used to say is my name is Daddy O and I'm down by law and you can suck my ass with a crazy straw. Now that's 1980 I'm saying that. This is before I'm making, and that was no disrespect. You know, what we did do is this. This is what we did. And this is where adults only fits in. If we were cursing when we plugged into street lamps and your mother came down the street, we turned it down or we stopped cursing. We waited for the lady, Miss Jones or Miss Smith or whoever she was, to go by before we started back with the crazy straw and suck my ass again. Hip hop comes from everywhere. Like, uh, you know, there's, 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 there's a lot of, don't, I, I can only use myself as an example. I'm a high school graduate. Most of my friends went to college. When I met most of my friends, they asked me, where did you go to school? That's hip hop. The, ter the terminology digging for brown, I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that most people's imagination go wild when they hear that. And, um, you know, you, you, you might have a, you know, you got a few people that take it in different ways. Some people take it as a sexual innuendo. Um, there's other people that may take it, I don't know, in other ways. Um, I, I've always been one of those people that attach my own definitions on things. And what I think about is, I, actually, it's something, the first thing I thought about was something that I learned from Run from Run DMC. And that is, Run always says, um, well, he, he said it, he, he says it often, but he said it actually is something that he said in his first book. And it was about diamonds. And what he said about diamonds was, there's two things that happens when you, when you, when you dig for diamonds. One is that you get your hands dirty. And then the other was, that you know where not to dig again. And so when I think about digging for brown, I think about that in, 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 in terms of the whole concept. I think of, of you know, it's, it's deeper and, and, a lot, and a lot more extensive than digging for gold, because you don't really dig for gold, you kind of like pan for gold, and that's a whole other thing. But you know, when you dig in, you, it's, it's, it's deep, you go in deep. And, and the first thing I think about is you gotta get your hands dirty. You just have to, have to get your hands dirty. You gotta go deep into the earth and you're gonna have to get your hands dirty.